Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today I've uploaded the first portion of the new AI update as a part of my UI UX course. And this is going to deal with the rest of this video showing you how to use GPT-4 in order to perform UX research. And this is for a real project. It's for my wife's lactation consulting business. And by the end of it, if you want to see how I take all of this research and formulate it into an actual real design in Figma, then you can join the course. There's gonna be a coupon here below. So I'll stop rambling. Let's go ahead and get started. Hello, Gary Simon here. Welcome to this brand new update. And I was, I've been very excited to create this update I, because AI has now really emerged. It is currently March of 2023 and AI is just absolutely exploding. And a lot of people are uncertain about what that means for the future of uh, designers, uh, UI, UX designers specifically. And what it means right now is that you're going to be way more efficient. And so I'm going to teach you in this particular project how to become more efficient with the help of AI, both in terms of UX and also UI. So in terms of UX, it's very powerful. You're gonna see that we can crank out journey maps. We'll discuss what that is, user flows, uh, excellent ad copy, and just give us a lot of direction initially when we're approaching a project. And we're also going to be utilizing uh, Mid Journey and that is a, an excellent tool for essentially creating any type of photograph or artwork. And so let me show you the project that we're actually going to tackle. So this right here is my wife's website. I built and designed this very quickly. It's for her business that she just launched. It's a lactation consulting business. This isn't the website we're designing. Um, I just wanna give you an overview of what it currently is. And basically she helps moms learn how to breastfeed and help, how to fix issues because breastfeeding is very difficult. And I wanna do a second website for her, one that's specifically for doing telehealth or online like Zoom appointments. And so that's what's exciting about this project. This is a real project and it's very near and dear to me because it's my wife's business. And so we're going to be creating an entirely uh, new website, specifically the landing page for this business for my wife. And we're going to utilize AI in the development and the design of this landing page. So the first uh, thing that we're gonna use is here is ChatGPT. You probably have heard of it by now. Um, this is by openai.com. You can try to try to get it there right there just by going chat.open or sorry about that, chat.openai.com and sign up if you haven't yet. Uh, there's a free version and there's a paid version as well. We'll be using G GPT-4, although you could still use GPT-3.5. Um, and then a later version, if, if they have like a 4.5, it'll probably even be better. So the same concepts still apply. We're also gonna use Midjourney right here. So if you go to midjourney.com, We'll see this very interesting landing page. And there's also a free version. They give you a few free credits and then you can pay for a monthly subscription and it's pretty cheap. And the things that you can generate this right now, version five of Mid Journey, uh, they're just photorealistic and they're, it's unbelievable about how I, you can use it as a UI UX designer to generate assets, both in terms of just illustrations and also in terms of realistic photographs, we're actually going to do that. We're gonna use one other service that you don't have to use, it's just for demonstration purposes. I wanted to create a, uh, a professional headshot of my wife so that we could use it on the, uh, the website, but I don't wanna to have to pay a photographer. Well, we don't have to anymore with AI. So I'll be using a service, I'll show you, it's just insane uh, what's happening right now. So I'll go ahead and stop it with the intro. We're gonna first use ChatGPT to start doing some uh, UX research and so that we can start to really build out uh, what this landing page should look like. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So here I am in the chat.openai.com forward slash chat. This is where uh, you can gain access to ChatGPT. And we can see right here, uh, we have the model to choose from 3.5 or GPT-4, which is the one we're going to go ahead and use. All right, currently we have like a cap, but this won't be an issue. Okay, so the very first thing we wanna do down here in the prompt itself is to specify 
I uh, the following line. Now this you don't necessarily have to do this, but uh, it's becoming kind of like a trend trying to inform the AI about what role it's going to play. In our case, we want to generate some initial ideas just from a UX perspective, a research perspective. We want to understand the target audience if it can help us with that. We want to get some color scheme ideas that would be relevant for this type of business and so on and so forth. So I've prepared a few initial prompts, but then we're just gonna kind of wing it to see what are the prompts would be relevant based on the responses the AI gives us. So the very first one is right down here. You are now a UI UX design research assistant. All right, so let's hit enter and see what it says. All right, so I'm just gonna zoom up here. Uh, as a UI UX design research assistant, I'm here to help you with any questions or guidance you need related to user interface and user experience design. Feel free to ask any questions, research, or request assistance rather, or share your thoughts on a specific project. I can provide insights on best practices, blah, blah, blah. You get the point. So awesome. So the next prompt I'm going to issue it is this down here, and I'm gonna zoom up here. Uh, this business is started by a single IBCLC certified registered nurse who will conduct lactation consulting sessions solely online using Zoom, all right? So let's go ahead and send that. And of course, we didn't really ask it for any information yet. I'm just kind of setting the groundwork here. So I, it's gonna give us some, um, some ideas. I'm gonna hit stop generating. I don't even care about that at the point. So now I'm going to give it this following prompt, which is I need you to help identify the target audience for this online lactation consultant business. Your findings should include the target audience demographics. So we're gonna hit enter and here we go. So let's zoom up, see what it's saying. To identify the target audience for an online lactation consultant business, we can start by considering the demographics and psychographics of a potential client. So here's a breakdown of the target audience. So we have demographics, which includes the age, new mothers and expecting mothers, typically in the age range of 20 to 45 years old, gender, primarily female, but also including fathers and partners who want to support breastfeeding. See location, since the consultants are conducted online, the target audience can, can be geographically dispersed, including clients from ur urban, suburban and rural areas. Education, the target audience, uh, let's see here, can have varying education levels, but may lean towards those with higher education as they might more inclined to seek professional guidance for breastfeeding, so that's an important topic. Um, income, clients with a moderate to high income as they might be more likely to afford lactation consultant services. Now, one thing I know off the bat, I, there are you know, those who have insurance do qualify a lot of the times, because uh, insurances do cover it. Not all of them, though. Um, psychographics, attitude, parents who value the benefits of breastfeeding and are proactive about seeking professional guidance. Um, challenges, parents facing issues related to breastfeeding, such as latching difficulties, low milk supply, or pain during breastfeeding. This is all very relevant stuff, and I know this because my wife is a lactation consultant, so I hear about this stuff. Interest, uh, parents can uh, parents interested in learning more about breastfeeding techniques, nutrition, and infant care and lifestyle, busy lifestyles who prefer the convenience of online co consultations or those with limited access to in-person uh, lactation consultants in their area. So there's not a lot of lactation consultants in the United States. And so this is definitely one of uh, the, the points that we would like to address and speak to in the ad copy uh, on the website. So that's uh, great information. And so what I would do is I would take both of these, switch over to, uh, this is a brand new, 100% clean, there's nothing in it. I Figma pro, or document here where I have one page called UX research. So I'm gonna get a frame out here and I'm just gonna paste in all that stuff. And of course we have this very large <laughs> text area. I'm gonna shrink that down. All right, so we're doing UX work here and this is our first bit. All right, so let's just, uh, there we go. Now we can reformat this, obviously. Uh, it would take a little bit of time. I'm not gonna do too much here, but we can really present this a uh, in kind of like a, a little bit more of a professional level than rather it just being a large wall of text. 
So we have age down here, new mothers. Uh, we can do this. Then we have gender. Again, you would just want to separate these out. Um, we're C location, all right. And then we have D education. And then finally, right here, we have attitude. We have B challenges. I guess we could put the A back here and the A up here. C interests, just about done. And D lifestyle. All right. Honestly, I probably remove these A, B, C, D. Just it's unnecessary. We already have the, the, um, the little subject next to it. But this is this is helpful. Definitely helpful for our purposes. So now what we can do is we can query it once again, and we can ask it to create us five user personas that represent your findings from this previous prompt right here. So a user persona is not something we've covered in this course uh, to this point, at least at this point in time. Uh, but basically, they're just kind of fictional uh, generalizations, uh, kind of like in person form um, that kind of represent your target audience. And in, in doing so, it, it's, it's not something that's required for every project, but it can kind of help you formulate your ideas for how you're going to structure the layout and the ad copy to speak to these people. So putting kind of like a fictional uh, name, uh, a, a fictional person in front of you can help with the whole empathetic process of trying to connect with potential clients. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this prompt right here. You create, can you create five user personas that represent your findings from the previous prompt? So let's go ahead and hit enter there. And let's see what it does, certainly. Here are five user personas representing the uh, online lactation consulting business. And so here we go, persona one, the person's name is Emily, the age is 28, occupation is a marketing specialist, location urban, married, bachelor's degree, income is middle, situation, first time mother experiencing latching difficulties with her new birth. That's a very typical sort of persona in this type of line of work. Uh, another one is uh, a younger per or older person, a 35, stay-at-home mom, married, master's degree, income's high, mother is two, struggling with low milk supply for a youngest child. Now, what's interesting, when you issue this particular prompt, you may get a different format for how these personas are delivered to you. Uh, I know this because I did it earlier and it didn't include as much information as it is now. So you can always ask it to readjust these user personas to include in different, uh, additional information that may be relevant. Perhaps when you do it, I, the marital status might not be there, or maybe it didn't include pain points or whatever situation right here. Last time it included a part called pain points, which I think is just kind of similar to what it has spit out here, which is situation. All right, so it's, it's it's describing you know the 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 current difficulties, uh, with the user persona, which is an integral part, it's an important part, the pain points uh, that you want. So, what I would do is take these all five of these, and I'm not going to worry about formatting these correctly. It's just going to take too too long, but I will paste them in um, here. So. We could do a new frame or just kind of paste this in with the existing one. Oh, good, it, it has it set up pretty well already. So if I do this, there we go. One thing I'll do real quickly is just uh, hit shift after each one of these. And of course, I've, there, there's um, definitely a justification, especially if, really, especially if you have stakeholders who are working with uh, you on this project for you to go ahead and create cards out of each one of these. Um, you can put actual fictional people with the help of AI if you're going to use something like an, uh, an image model like something like Midjourney, you can create just fake people. Or you could just also put, uh, you could use something like Unsplash. I'll do it for one of them really, really quickly. Go to Unsplash here, woman and just try to find somebody that might look like she's, you know, 28 years old. Of course, we could completely do this with Mid Journey as well. In fact, you know what? Well, let's just use one of these. So I'm gonna hit O on my keyboard. We're gonna create a little, I uh, 
circle there, and then we'll use her. She looks like she could be, actually she looks like she could be 28 easily. We can um, zoom in here real quickly. We can modify the image over here. And let me get out of the way real quickly. And then we can change it to crop. Now we can move her in, there we go. All right, so that's our first one. Now I'm gonna show you how to use Midjourney AI to create just a fictional user per persona uh, picture that you could use right here. So I'm gonna switch over to the Discord uh, app. All right, so here I am in one of the general uh, areas, the, the channels that you can join. Um, you can also create your own Discord server, invite it, and that way you don't have all these other people generating prompts here. It, it's up to you entirely. Um, so I have a prompt um, ready to go here, and we're, the way you do this, let me zoom up, is we first just go ahead and specify slash image, imagine rather, hit enter, and then now here's our prompt. So I'm going to say, 35 year old woman and for this particular persona it was somebody with high income so we could also add uh, something like luxury I said I had this prepared beforehand but I didn't I realized I realized I never wrote it down so I'm just kind of thinking off the top of my head 35 year old woman um, we'll, we'll say she's a uh, brunette long hair I, and then we can also specify um, luxury in a l luxury kitchen during a sunny day. Now we're going to put V5, and I think that's good right there. V5 for Mid Journey version 5. Currently, we have to specify this tag and let's see what it ends up producing. So now if I go back right here, you can see uh, it has my name and it is currently waiting to start. So it's gonna take, a, all right, so it's starting right now. Now it's interesting because it looks like the image is appearing to be darker. So again, I have no clue what it is about to uh, produce, but then again, at 0%, can't really say anything much. Now it's starting to come into shape. And once we find one we like, we have two options. We can either I uh, create or prompt it to create different variations of one that we like a lot, or we can up res it, meaning we can get a higher quality version where it's just gonna give us one, you know, that particular image that is of high quality. And so I'm already loving what I'm seeing so far. Even as that 62% is blurry, I, I can tell these are definitely gonna work. It's ex almost exactly what I imagined. I asked for a 35 year old woman and you can see she's not exactly aged. Uh, like she's not too young, she's not too old looking. So I'm like really liking this lower right, right, lower right hand corner one just because it has a lot of uh, uh, sunshine. This one would, up top would work as well. So let's let's uh, check this out. So, looking at this, these are pretty pretty amazing. It's one of my first times actually doing this, and the hands look good right here. Hands were always an issue in the other ones. These hands look good up here. There's not extra fingers. Very very impressive. So I actually like version four right here. So what I'll do is I'm going to take. You can see these buttons right here. So all we have to do, if we wanna um, create more variations of this particular image, this would be four. So it's one, two, three, four. And if we really like the one that, that's version four, for instance, we just hit U4. So then it's gonna give us, it issues a new prompt down here and it basically has it ready for us. <laughs> look at that. So now, I it does look a little bit strange right around here. You could tell there's some kind of issues, but you know what? We only don't, we're not even gonna show her hands. We're just gonna show this part. That's all we need. So now we can just uh, open in browser. It's a PNG file, so we can save this image as by right clicking. And I'll just call this a uh, 35 year old woman. Save it on my desktop. We will go back. I uh, Let's hide this. 
And now we can go ahead and take our image, choose image. Here she is. And of course, we, we wanna choose fill first, but then crop back again and make it larger. So we could take this image here, hold Shift and Alt, scale up. Look at that. So I just showed you two different ways that you can use um, I, Unsplash, which is the, the old approach, or the new approach of using AI to create a person that doesn't even exist. Very, very, very cool. So you could do this through all the rest of these just to, to add them or add to them rather. All right, great. Okay, so here we are. We still have all of our prompts here. And what I wanna do is ask some more questions. So I'm going to ask them this question here. I'm gonna paste it and we'll look at this. So can you describe the information architecture for the landing page of this business? So. IA or information architecture is a subset of UX design that kind of just describes I or it's establishing kind of all of the the content that would exist on the landing page. So the primary goal is to convince the user that they should schedule an online lactation appointment. I decided to add that at that bit at the end. And here's what it says. To create an effective landing page to schedule an online lactation point, uh, appointment, you'll want to focus on providing the right information and clear call to action, CTAs. Here's a suggested information architecture for the landing page. So header, logo, navigation, uh, important pages such as about services, fact, and content. Um, prominently feature a schedule and appointment button. So hero section should have a headline, a compelling and clear headline that communicates the value of the online lactation consultant service. We can actually have it spit out to us a, a bunch of different headline ideas. Um, and we'll do that. A sub headline as well, image or a video. Again, we can generate the image with Midjourney. Um, we could uh, specify the call to action, list out the key benefits of scheduling online lactation consultant, uh, such as personalized support, convenience, and accessibility. Talk about the consultant uh, themselves, about the IVCLC certified registrar. So it remembered all this stuff from the very beginning. Uh, qualifications, experience, and a personal touch. Uh, included professional looking photo of the consultant, testimonials, services, uh, frequently asked questions, and a footer. All right, so all pretty pretty obvious stuff, but it did mention a couple things that I perhaps did not think of. So that's why having this AI assistant in terms of UX process is very helpful. So once again, we can take all this information and we can copy it and then paste it into a new frame. Let's move this stuff off right here. All right, so I'm not gonna go ahead and try to format all this because that's unnecessary, but let's just continue on I building out kind of like this UX research kind of workflow with the AI assistant. So uh, let's minimize that. So now I'm gonna ask it to describe a, a user flow uh, in this area. I don't have this prompt already prepared, so bear with me. We're gonna do this on the fly. Can you describe a user flow in a scenario where a expecting mom, so this is a person who doesn't have a baby yet, um, saw an ad for the lactation service on Facebook and wants to schedule an appointment. All right, so I think that's okay. We'll see what it generates. I'm not sure if it's gonna spit out what exactly I want, but let's give it a shot. We can always ask for clarification and other things. In this scenario, the expecting mom, let's call her Jane, sees a Facebook ad for the online lactation consulting service and decides to schedule an appointment. Here's a description of the user flow. Clicks on an ad, clicks on an ad from Facebook, which leads to the landing page of the lactation consulting service website. Explore the landing page. Jane reviews the content on the landing page, which includes the headline, benefits, consultant information, test testimonials, and services offered. This information convinces Jane that the service is a good fit for her needs. Uh, she clicks on the call to action, schedule an appointment button, which is prominently displayed on the landing page. Appointment booking page, the CTA, or the call to action, takes Jane to the, uh, let's see over here, the appointment booking page, where she can select the type of consultation, such as prenatal, postnatal, follow-up, choose a date and time, and provide her contact information. 
um, create an account, which is optional, uh, payment and confirmation, appointment reminder, online consultation, and there we go. That's actually a pretty, uh, pretty good user flow just for the first time asking for this. We could always go back and say, or not go back, but we can always ask another prompt and ask, the, you know, to provide some clarification. Like for instance, um, if the payment and confirmation is perhaps handled by something like Square, we could say, can you alter this user flow to include the payment and confirmation section as being um, handled by Square and what that might look like if it's taken off our site and it has to come back to our site, so on and so forth. So very useful for creating user flows as well, as you can see. So again, once again, um, and we should probably title each one of these. So this one, you know, this one could be, uh, let's say, uh, we can call this IA, and we'll make this large right here. Let's just go ahead and copy this. Oops, that's a little bit crazy large. Let's move this over. All right. So what was the size of this type? That's 12. Okay, so this will be 12 too. All right. So again, I'll just quickly drag this in. Probably drag it in further. There we go. Make it easier to read. And again, I would separate this out with white space and uh, we can go ahead and take this call this a, a user flow. And again, when it comes to user flows like this, this is just describing it. Unfortunately, ChatGPT at this point in time doesn't actually output images. Uh, so you could take this guidance to create more of a graphical user flow experience if you wish, if that's something that you wanna do. You don't have to, uh, but, but again, it, it's one of those things that can help when you're trying to come up with a wireframe and then the, 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 the actual polished end result. Okay, so that's uh, looking really solid. We kind of have, uh, obviously within a span of a few minutes, re really, uh, we have a lot of information that was all given to us by AI, AI itself. So at this point, uh, we can start asking ourselves, or asking AI rather, I, we would like some content. Can you give us some guidance in terms of uh, the ad copy, maybe for the hero section? So let's try that out real quick. We'll come back here and what we'll do is zoom up. Can you provide some copy for the hero section, which includes the headline, a sub headline, and the copy for the uh, CTA button? Enter. All right, let's see what happens. So head, headline, expert lactation support at your fingertips. I don't really like that because it doesn't emphasize uh, the actual fact that it's online. So we can, and I thought it was gonna give me multiple iterations of this, but it only gave us one. So I can just say, say, can you provide me with four more of those? With four more variations, there we go. All right, so variation one, empowering your breastfeeding experience. Again, these are all really solid uh, options here. And we don't have to stick with each one of these, like with this headline and this sub headline, we can figure out the sub headlines that may work and mix and match. Uh, breastfeeding confidence starts here, schedule session today for that uh, here. Another headline, Nour nourish your baby with conf confidence. Your online breastfeeding ally, I like that one because it, it emphasizes the online aspect. So we can copy that one uh, for sure. I like book your appointment today, maybe a little bit, a little bit wordy, but maybe not uh, because it's 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 really describing, which is a, a, a core tenant of good UX design. Uh, when it comes to your ad copy and your call to action buttons, don't just say click here or learn more more accurately describe what's gonna happen as a result of clicking that button. And this did perfect. Uh, so partner with our service. I don't like that one because you're not really partnering with an IBCLC. Um, so we'll, we'll get this figured out. So I think we're gonna use your online breastfeeding ally for the headline. So 
we're going to go back and we're going to put this in a new area. And we'll paste that here. All right, so let's go back. Let's find a subheadline that we like here. Um, connect with a certified IVCLC for online guidance support. Um, discover the convenience of online lactation consultants with our experienced IVCLC registered nurse. Okay, that kind of works. I think we'll use this one. Uh, I like schedule a session today also. So we got those two out of the way. All right. And then schedule a session today. All right. So what we can do real quickly to stylize this is we'll say uh, headline. We'll make this. Uh, we want to differentiate it with good typographic visual hierarchy, as we like to say here. All right, headline, subheadline, and then call to action. Great. All right, so we'll call this uh, home copy. All right, this is quite a bit too large. So I'm going to take these and scale these down to about 40. All right. And then finally, we'll, we'll do this one. I uh, demographics. There we go. All right. So let's continue on with the copy. Um, what we can do is Let's see here. We can take a look at the user flow, or not the user flow, but the uh, IA section, hero section. So we, we have, we're following its guidance here, benefits. So yeah, listing out the benefits, I think having an area that lists out the benefits underneath the hero section, which is what the uh, this section is for that we just covered, the headline, subheadline, and the, the CDA. Um, we should have a list of benefits. So what we can do is we can ask it for those benefits. So. Can you provide me with a list of six benefits? Let's zoom up so you can see this. Of six benefits that would convince a person to schedule an online lactation consulting session. There we go. Um, maybe we can ask it also to provide it with a title and a, a brief description of that benefit. That way we can have, we can construct cards uh, for these six benefits. So we, we may not use them all depending on what it gives us, but it's gonna give us options. That's why I'm asking for six. We could just use three, whatever. So what I'm gonna do is uh, say, please include a title and a brief description that is no longer than two sentences for each benefit. All right. So title, personalized guidance. All right, so this doesn't have anything to do with the fact that it's online and that's okay because we have to emphasize the benefit obviously of having a lactation consulting consultant helping you in the first place. So they're not all gonna be about the fact that they're online. Convenient and accessible, we can see right here, that's definitely very relevant. Um, expert knowledge, uh, title confident, confidential and judgment free. Okay, that's definitely relevant. Ongoing support, yep. That's actually something that my wife offers as an IBCLC, you can uh, create follow-up appointments. Um, improved outcomes, that's obviously the hope. <laughs> and there we go. So very solid section right here. I'm gonna take each one of those and then go back here to our document. And I could probably just add them right here. Darn it, that is size 12, that's right. So let's make that, there we go. Uh, 
Now what I can do is just shrink this again. And in this section, we can just I uh, give it a title of benefits. There we go. I'm not going to worry about structuring this for us at the, this point in time, but that looks pretty solid. All right. So let's take a look at the IA section at generator for us and about the consultant. This is something it wouldn't know because it doesn't know my wife. So this is something that we can obviously definitely include on our own. We don't need its help. Testimonials, again, one of those things that IA is not going to help us with. Of course, you don't want to use fake testimonials. Um, although you could ask it to generate some testimonials, just fake ones, just for the purpose of filling out the form rather than using um, lorem ipsum text or something like that. Um, so I think we could we could definitely do that to help us in that context. So let's go ahead and do that real quickly. There's no reason not to. I'm going to go ahead here. We'll zoom up. Can you help? Can you create? Let's say three fictional user testimonials. I will not use these because I guarantee you it's going to say this is unethical because it is. Uh, I will not use these, these when the website is live, but it would be, I'm kind of like blocking the screen. It would be helpful, helpful while working within Figma. And we'll, we can also ask it to, um, with, with a name and the user's testimonial, something like that. Uh, let's hit enter. There we go. This is so great. This is so transformative too. Uh, th this AI stuff is it's deserving all the hype that it's getting uh, because we were not able to do this before. So I'm going to zoom out. There's going to be one more testimonial it gives us. And it's like the, they're like perfect length. Like I said, I, I gave it a constraint, no more than two sentences. Actually, there's three right here, but that's fine. These are all similar in length. Yeah, see, I knew it would do it. It said, remember to replace them with real client testimonials when the website goes live. So there you go. It's there to keep you in check as well. So we can take these. We can go back here to our Figma document. And we'll just grab this real quick. Put this here, testimonials right there. All right. Let's, let's drag this out here. Now I'm going to put an empty spot for the bet the let's see here the about portion right here. So we're going to put them out about section benefits. This is going to be testimonials. All right, and then testimonial three. There. Okay. Now let's take a look at what else is there. Services. Now for the services, that's one of those things we do not need AI for. We understand the services that we're going to provide. You could ask it for ideas for services that we could include, uh, maybe that we haven't thought about. Um, so that's that's a possibility. Um, I don't think we're going to do that right now. Uh, frequently asked questions. Um, this is something it could definitely help with because sometimes it can be difficult to anticipate the questions that uh, the visitors might have, especially if you don't have a, a live website yet and you're not sure. You can ask it, you should be able to rather, I'm not sure, I mean you should be able to ask it to help produce a fact section, a frequently asked question section for this type of business. So I think that would completely make sense. Let's go back to, not mid journey, sorry, that's the wrong thing there we go all right so can you generate a fact section based on common 
questions or concerns that the target audience might have. Please generate at least, we'll say six different questions and answers. All right, let's check it out. How do I prepare for my online lactation consultant? Very, very odd, that's a very good question. Would I have thought of that? No, probably not. Uh, what can I expect during the online lactation consult consultation? It's gonna give us that. So this is excellent as like a writing assistant um, and an ad copy assistant. Very, very solid. How long does it take uh, in a, a typical online lactation consult consultation last? Will my insurance cover? lactation consult consultations. So again, these will be adjusted based on, you know, whether or not, you, you know, we're gonna tackle insurance and all that good stuff. Can my partner or support person join the online consultation? So this is so awesome. These are all legit questions that I could see people having. So this is awesome. What if I need additional support? I absolutely love it. Game changer for sure. So let's go ahead and copy this from the top to the bottom. All right, now let's go back to our Figma document. We're just about done with this. All right. And this is going to be FAQ. And this could be its own page, by the way. We don't have to. You don't, don't necessarily have to use, uh, to place this on the home page. And you, here's, a, here's a, a good thing that I just thought of. I'm not sure if it makes sense most, you know, to, to put the fact, like a, a brief fact maybe on the home page, maybe it lists out maybe the top three, and then click, and then they can click on a link to access a more elaborate fact. I'm not sure if that makes sense, we can ask the AI itself that very question. So I'm trying trying to show you that you can really have an engaged conversation. Uh, so let's do this. Do you think it makes most sense to put the fact that you just generated on the landing page or on a separate page on the website? While it's possible to include the facts section on a landing page, it may be more beneficial to place it on a separate page of the website. The landing page should primarily focus on convincing users to schedule an appointment and providing essential information. Including the fact on a separate page allows you to maintain a clean, focused landing page design while still addressing common questions and concerns. You can link to the fact page in the main navigation menu or a secondary call to action on the landing page, making it easy for users to find and access information. By creating a dedicated fact page, you can also expand the content over time, adding more questions and answers as you identify, identify blah, blah, blah. Okay, so yep, pretty good reasonable advice, clearly. Um, so one more thing that we're going to ask it to do is we will ask it to provide us with color scheme ideas that would be relevant based on the target uh, demographic, the target audience. So we're going to ask it. So can you produce a few color schemes that would work well based on the business and the target audience? All right, I know we've been, this is a longer video, but we're just about done. Sure, here are three color schemes that will work well for an online lactation consulting business. I'm concerning the nature of the service and the target audience. Each color scheme includes a primary color, secondary, and accent color. You can use the, these color combinations to create visually appealing and professional website design. All right. And it's interesting because if you ran that same exact prompt, and we can always click regenerate, um, it, it, it might even 
provide you with the psychological basis for why it's choosing these colors. I, I did it one other time uh, just yesterday and it actually did that. So we can ask it to provide us reasonings for why it's choosing these colors, but we don't necessarily have to. What I'm excited to see is taking these color codes in and seeing what these actually look like. Are they good? I don't know. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna take each of these color schemes. We're gonna go back here to uh, Figma and we'll just copy this right here. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll say color scheme ideas. All right, color scheme one. Now we will break this down just a bit. I'm gonna give myself some white space here after each one of these. And we're going to get a rectangle, the R tool. And we're gonna put these primary, secondary, and accent colors next to each other, just like this. So primary uh, color one is teal. Let's see what this looks like. Definitely a teal, it's kind of like a darker one. Off-white will go right here. Okay, so when we click on off-white, we can see it has like, I uh, let's see, let's zoom up here. It looks like there could be a tiny potential for a, just a tiny little bit of blue. It's off-white, definitely off-white. Um, sandy brown, all right, so this is the accent color. Yeah. Th these three work very well together, actually, so I'm really impressed. Let's uh, take this and copy these. We'll do another one here. Uh, we'll do all, both of them, actually. So we, oops, sorry about that. We wanna take this. All right, so sage green. Again, these are calming co colors, uh, which are suitable for this type of business uh, because these are high-stressed moms. Uh, you, you, if they're a prenatal appointment, they're not too high stress because the child's not there yet. But I, uh, if they do have a child, then usually they're very frustrated because that's when they call the lactation consultant if things aren't going right. Um, so let's take this one. This is white smoke, kind of very similar up here already. At least it's consistent. And then Sandy, oops, sorry about that. There we go. Sandy Brown, wow. Those are very close together. Wait, they're the same. Wait a second. I wanna make sure I'm doing this correctly. This is the color code here. And there we go. Okay, so for some reason this was a different color code. That's interesting. All right, so very similar actually. Um, let's try another one, color scheme three. All right, powder blue. So we actually have a blue one this time and We'll paste that there. Very light. Mint cream. Again, this is gonna be probably very similar to the other ones. Uh, keep on doing that, sorry. Okay, so that works. And then burnt sienna. It looks like it's, these are all gonna be very similar uh, in color. Okay. But I actually, you know, it, 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 it's really adhering to um, a good primary, secondary, and accent color right here. So these are all usable. And of course you can ask for a lot more. I think we'll probably just stick with one of these um, when we make our determination on what color scheme to use. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you wanna learn more and follow along with the progression of this project into where we actually designed a real layout and such, you can join the course below. So it's over 16 hours worth of UI UX. And if you wanna specifically just jump to this part in the course where you know we work on this project specifically, you can just go ahead and click on the uh, AI chapter in the course. So there's a coupon code here below in the YouTube description so you can get started today. All right, I'll see you soon, goodbye.